there is absolutely no crisis in the public debt of the United States. So yes, fears to that point are, 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 are completely overblown. Now you say that the ceiling, the debt ceiling, is an anachronism based on an idea that the government must raise money from elsewhere before it is able to spend that money. Why is this, this not the case today? Well, the debt ceiling initially was enacted in 1917, and it was a device to facilitate uh, the issuing of bonds uh, for the First World War. Uh, since that time, we have moved to a system which is very much a system of what you call, what I call fiat money. Uh, and when the, the government writes you a check, it simply, your bank simply credits that sum to your, uh, to your balance. So the government does not actually have to find the money anyway, it's sim anywhere. It simply sends a signal to your bank and the money appears. Now, why do you believe the U.S. government will never, ever have a problem funding its public expenditures and deficits? Because the electricity supply to the computers that send those signals will never be cut off. <laughs> it's that simple. Simple as that. I mean, and they can't be cut off. It, can't do you be see? Cut off. You know, now much of the U.S. debt, um, it's in the form of short-term borrowing, mm -hmm. and that needs to eventually be rolled over, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. What does this mean in terms of the country's future financial strength? Nothing in particular. Uh, Obviously, it would be possible for those who hold U.S. Treasury bills and bonds to sell them and buy some other country's uh, obligations. But first of all, there aren't enough of those obligations out there in the world to make up for the supply of U.S. ones. So it's not a practical option. And secondly, there's no other uh, asset out there which other countries would, and other creditors regard as being as secure. So the chances of this happening uh, in any, on any substantial scale are really very remote. And if it did, then, you know, the European Central Bank and the Russian Central Bank and the People's Bank of China would all step in and buy up the assets because they don't want the U.S. dollar to fall. Now, some argue that the United States is the next Greece in terms of sovereign credit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you have a particular position on this. How would you respond to such an argument? The United States cannot become anything like uh, Greece, except by inflicting on itself uh, the kind of austerity policies that the Greeks have had imposed on them by the by the Troika. Uh, Troika is an interesting yeah. Russian word, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very uh, good. We um, like that you, you drop that in there. The, uh, uh, in terms of the financial stability of the United States, the conditions of the two countries are totally different. Uh, the Greeks have to earn euro in order to pay interest on their bonds. Uh, and the United States government does not need to earn dollars in order to pay dollar interest on dollar bonds. Uh, so uh, it's it simply, and the world sees this. It, it's not just the United States. The same, the world has equal confidence in Britain or Germany uh, or Japan, for example. France, too, for that matter. So it's kind of comparing apple to oranges in the sense that the U.S. can print money and its own money. Correct. And Greece cannot. That's, that's exactly what you're right, yes. Now, what percentage of Congress do you think understands the relationship of debt and the economy? If I got all of them off the record, I imagine I could find one or two. <laughs> really? I haven't tried it. You, the, you're deadpan serious on this. Yes. One, okay. That, my next question then. Now, you've lectured Congress multiple times, mm -hmm. uh, yet your message on debt and deficits does not seem to be trickling down, if you will. Um, isn't it difficult to make effective policy if the majority of Americans, including the politicians, and when I say the majority of Americans, have no idea how the engine actually works? It's a huge challenge, absolutely. Uh, and this is a situation which has been going on in the United States for 40 years, roughly since uh, Richard Nixon took the U.S closed the gold window in 1971 uh, and changed the, con the financial relationship of the United States to the rest of the world. Uh, we became the reserve currency uh, in a major way in the 1980s. Uh, and it's true, our political leadership does not understand the significance of this fact. It simply doesn't, doesn't understand it at all. It doesn't understand the relationship between our trade deficit and our budget deficit. And they make assumptions that the desirable state is something called balance, in which revenues and expenditures become equal to each other, which is not only completely undesirable for the United States, it's also a practical impossibility.
It is a practical impossibility. Yes, it's, it's, it, so long as the U.S. maintains its position as a, a supplier of reserve assets to the world, it cannot run a uh, trade balance or budget balance for anything but a very short period of time.